Well, hello, nerds. I am so glad you could join me here in my laboratory at Neutrino Tech. You are just in time to witness the construction of my evil lair. Once it is complete, my evil plan will begin, and soon I will answer to no one. Josh, come take out the garbage! Coming, dear. I don't know about you guys, but growing up, reading comic books and watching spy movies, I always seemed to identify a little bit more with the characters that really embraced the mad scientist archetype. It's alive! Now, aside from a love of felines and totally not terrifying facial scars, what do all these guys have in common? I got it. A secret lair. While I don't have a private island with an active volcano or a cave that's somehow shaped like a skull, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and do everything in my power to turn my little lab into a lair fit for a Bond villain. Now, this obviously isn't a project that happens overnight or that I could cover in one video, especially since I'm doing this all myself. So, this is going to be the first video in a series heading towards my ultimate goal. Taking over the world. So for today's project, I'm starting with an essential. Security. Bring in the fan box! Well, more like a biometric lock. <gasps> yeah, well, today I'm installing an electromagnetic lock that's going to be activated by a fingerprint scanner. To complete today's project, I'm going to need an electromagnetic lock, a 5-volt relay, a fingerprint scanner, a 16 by 2 LCD screen, and to drive it all, a Raspberry Pi. Now, the fingerprint scanner that I'm using has its own onboard memory and a little microcontroller inside where it actually stores all of the fingerprint data and determines whether the proper finger has been placed on the reader. The Raspberry Pi is essentially just acting as an interface between the fingerprint scanner and the lock. So I could technically use something smaller or simpler like an Arduino, but this gives me room to upgrade later if I want to add, say, a security camera or higher functionality. In Fusion 360, I designed a mount that'll hold the fingerprint scanner and the LCD screen. I also added a little lid here so that the LCD screen and the, the flickering lights from the LED don't get too annoying later. I also designed a small box to mount the Raspberry Pi uh, that'll also hold the 5 volt relay and I'm going to put a voltage regulator in there so I can use the same power supply to power the 12 volt magnet and the Raspberry Pi which actually uses 5 volts. Uh, the little post right here inside the box is going to be used to hold a barrel jack to power the whole system. Um, it's kind of an odd little fit in there, but I wanted to keep everything as tight as possible, and that allows me to kind of mount it right over the top of the voltage regulator. Now for the door portion of the system, I want to keep the handle that's currently on the door, but I'm going to remove the latch and mount the metal portion of the magnetic lock on the outside of the door. To do this, I'll route out a hole for the metal bar, and then that is actually going to be bolted and attached to these threads here, and then this whole bit will sit inside where the door handle currently is. That way here, the post for the door handle can still go through, and the door handle can be mounted normally. So while that's printing, we'll go ahead and take a look at the schematic and how we're going to actually get everything wired here. Uh, so, like I said before, we're going to have a barrel jack with a 12 volt in, uh, and that's going to split off, and it's going to one side of that's going to go into the relay that controls the electromagnetic lock. Uh, the other portion of that will go into my voltage regulator here, where I can turn this down to a 5 volt output, and that will allow us to directly hardwire the Raspberry Pi for its power source. Then we're going to have the 16x2 LCD screen that's going to be wired fairly standardly according to the documentation for this module here. You have a little potentiometer here to adjust the contrast of the screen so you can actually see what it's printing out. 
And then we obviously have the uh, data line going to the relay to turn that on and off, given the signal from the fingerprint scanner, which is going to be hooked up by a uh, TTL uh, serial interface USB. Unfortunately, that's the easiest way to run the fingerprint scanner as far as I'm currently aware. If anybody knows a better way to do this, please let me know in the comments. I'd be glad to implement it later. Um, but yeah, that will be hooked up via USB. I'll go ahead and make the schematic available through a link in the description. Uh, so if anybody else wants to try this later, they can. So before we get too far into discussing the code used here, uh, I want to make a bit of a disclaimer. I am by no means a professional coder. Uh, I get by with a little bit of Python and I use a whole lot of copy and paste from modules that I find and putting things together in the way that best works for me. So if there's something that's done strange here, uh, that's very possible that I just don't know what I'm doing. Um, but if you see it's something that I could have improved on, please let me know. Uh, I'm always looking to improve my coding skills. But basically, this is the basic outline of the code that runs the program we're using. We're using the Pi fingerprint and Adafruit libraries to communicate with the fingerprint scanner. Um, and then you have your basic uh, GPIO and button set up here. Uh, again, you have your general set of code used to communicate with the fingerprint scanner itself. There's a function here that actually does a search uh, of the fingerprint library uh, to determine whether or not you have access to the lock. Below that is another function that basically allows you to enroll new fingerprints if, if need be. And then finally, um, you have the actual function that's running most of the time, which looks for a button press for enrolling a new fingerprint actually just now realized I forgot to include two things in the schematic, uh, both of them being additional buttons. One is for enrollment of a new fingerprint, and the other one is for the inside of the lab. I have to have a way to get out, right? So there's going to be another button that'll also deactivate the lock and turn it off for five seconds. And then it's also going to go through and do that search finger function. And like I said earlier, if it finds a fingerprint that's in the library, it will turn off the magnetic lock for five seconds, allowing you to get back in, and then it'll automatically turn back on. Okay, everything's done printing. The code has been written. Uh, here we have the box for the Raspberry Pi that I've already bolted in, and I've got the barrel jack glued in there. Uh, the relay and voltage regulator will go here, but I have to do some soldering there, so that's not put in yet. And then we have the little module set up here for the fingerprint scanner and the display. Now the fingerprint scanner didn't have any sockets on it to bolt down or mount it to anything, so I actually just siliconed it in there. I think that should be just fine. Uh, I have the screen held in here with some M3 screws, and in the back I have like a little channel where the wires from that can go through the same hole as the wires for the fingerprint scanner. And obviously, got a little lid here. So at this point, I think we can go ahead and start making some soldered connections. Then we can pull out the power tools and see what kind of havoc I can wreak on the infrastructure of my lab. With that being said, we have come to my favorite part of any video. Let's get ready to montage!
have the final product. Lift the lid and it will ask you for access. You scan a fingerprint and then it will open the door. And lock again in five seconds. Now, I don't have my pinky in here, so I'll use this as an example. You scan something not there, it will tell you access denied. And the door will remain locked. Now that flashing that we see there, unfortunately that is not a camera effect. I tried multiple attempts to get that to go away. I think it has something to do with the sleep timer in the code. I'm not 100% sure, so if anybody has any ideas, let me know in the comments so I can fix that, because it is kind of annoying. But otherwise, the lock holds up really good. I do need to take the time to clean up the Raspberry Pi mount here on the wall a little bit. I ordered some wire wraps to conceal that a little bit, and I'm going to run the wires to the magnetic lock down this spine right here as well um, to make that a little bit nicer looking, but none of that stuff's in yet, so I'll have to do that off camera. Now one thing I didn't think of when I was first starting this project is this mechanism right here is not the typical way these magnetic locks work um, and because of that I actually had to mount this with a little bit of slop in it that allows the magnet to pull itself up close to the bar when it actually engages um, otherwise you end up with a gap there and it doesn't actually seal itself and you hear that click that means it's actually pulling the magnet into the bar well that's it for today's video and I'm now one step closer to having my very own secret layer if you have any ideas for a project you'd like to see me do here in the lab, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for inspiration for another project. Well, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, do me a huge favor and go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time right here on Neutrino Tech.